In the next few videos, we will talk about one of the web design features in Illustrator. We will talk about creating slices. So what are those? Let's say that you have created a web layout inside Illustrator. And let's also say that it has some graphic elements that can't be rendered using plain CSS code. For instance, icons or custom bullet points. If that's the case, you need to save them as images, either as JPEGs or PNGs. Illustrator lets you save those elements as slices created in the slicing process, which basically is a way of telling Illustrator which parts of the layout you would like to separate from the rest and save independently. So let's see what it looks like in practice. I got a landing page design right here and as you can see, it's got a logo in the top left corner and some icons down here and all the way down here. Most of the elements of this design can be created using the CSS code, but the logo and the icons can and in many cases have to be turned into separate images. Let's start the slicing process and we can do it in two different ways. We can head over to the Tools panel and choose the Slice tool. And notice that it has a default shortcut of the Shift plus K key combination. And so now we can click and drag around, for instance, the logo to create a slice. Alternatively, you can just select a piece of artwork, then go to the Object menu, Slice, and then Make. Notice that Illustrator created a slice whose boundaries are exactly encompassing the artwork, so using this technique, you don't have to worry that you will select parts of the artwork that you don't want. So just for practice, let's move on to the icons down here. Choose one. Head over to the Object menu. Slice. And this time, let's choose the Create from Selection. To create a slice, which would be a separate icon for web development purposes. Now, what's great about this technique is that you don't need to select your objects one by one to turn them into slices. You can shift click on more than one icon and then go to the object menu, slice, and then make. But uh, we can speed the process up even further by assigning a custom shortcut to this function. And to do that, let's go to the Edit menu, Keyboard Shortcuts, and on a Mac you would go to Illustrator, Keyboard Shortcuts. And in here, let's choose Menu Commands. Let's find Object, Slice and Make. And let's assign a keyboard shortcut to it. Just make sure that it's not already being used by Illustrator. Now if I just scroll down to these icons, I can select all of them, press my newly created shortcut, and create all the slices in one batch. But there is yet another way of creating slices. We can use guides to create them. So let's print out the rulers. And bring out some guides. Maybe this time around this icon. Now let's head on to the object menu, slice. And then create from guides. And as you can see, Illustrator is creating a slice which size is determined by the guides we just created. But uh, what if the slices that you created need some adjustments? I mean, when you create slices with the slice tool or with the guides like we did a second ago, chances are that the slices will be too big or too small. So to adjust the size of a particular slice, let's grab the slice selection tool that sits beneath the slice tool. And now when we hover over the slice boundaries, the cursor will change into this double arrow symbol, which means that if I now click and drag, I will effectively change the size of the slice. 
Now, before we move on to the next video, there is one really important piece of information I wanted to share with you. You probably have already noticed that under the slice command, we have two different options that uh, at a first glance do the same thing. I am talking about the make and create from selection options. And depending which option you choose, the slice is going to behave differently. Let me show you what I mean. So I will grab this first icon and create a slice from it by using the make command. Now I will grab the second icon and create a slice using the create from selection command. It seems like there is not much difference, right? But watch what happens when we try to resize the first icon. I will grab it and initialize the scale tool. And I will make the icon bigger. Notice that the slice has adapted itself to the new dimensions. Even if I move the icon around, the slice follows. But when I repeat the process with the second icon, the size of it changes, but the slice remains intact. So if you think that you might want to play around with the size and the position of the object you turned into a slice, better use the slice make command instead of create from selection. So I think that we got the slice creation process covered pretty well. In the next video, we will take a look at saving slices for web development purposes. So stay tuned.